What's hiding underneath things can be scary. Underwater, under your bed, especially what's under your carpet. Except when you get new carpet from Carpet One Floor and Home. After tearing up your old carpet, they'll vacuum and apply Healthinex antimicrobial to your subfloor, disinfecting and killing mold, mildew, and any remaining general awfulness. Carpet One Floor and Home goes the extra mile to protect you, your family, and your home. Carpet One Floor and Home in Columbia, making your home beautiful, guaranteed. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Tuesday, May the 2nd. Good to have you with us today. Uh, I've I've got a very special doctor sitting right beside me, Dr. Anand Chakalingam. He is a a heart specialist with VA Hospital and University Hospital cardiologist. And you're here today, doctor, to share a really special, inspiring story. Yes, Paul. Thanks so much for uh, having me here today. As a cardiologist, it's a very proud moment for me. I've been working on heart failure for the last 17 to 20 years, trying to see lifestyle, exercise, diet, and mindfulness, how we can improve uh, readmission rate and to keep people out of hospital, give them a little better quality of life and things like that. But now I think in the last four to five years, our program has gotten more streamlined and is able to address specific challenges. And uh, what we find is we have actually cured heart failure. You've actually cured heart failure. Now explain, what is heart failure? In this day and age, majority of the heart failure actually ends up being stiff hearts. We call it diastolic heart failure or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And uh, this one accounts for about 60% of heart failure here. In the last one or two decades, it's become so much of an issue and it's the biggest drain on our national economy because this costs so much money, nearly $30,000 every time somebody gets hospitalized. And even when they are at home, their quality of life is so little, they are on so many medicines and risk for life is 50 to 75% within five years. So it's more malignant than most cancers once someone gets diagnosed with heart failure and pulmonary hypertension and things like that. Now, you brought the guest along. She is an RN herself. Uh, She had heart failure. Ten different specific types of heart failure? Reasons. Like with this diastolic or aging-related stiff heart, is because of advanced age, like 9,500 years of age, or because of hypertension and metabolic problems like diabetes, excess weight, and so many other things. So, and mental stress also plays a role. Putting all these things together, taking care of the electrical activity like atrial fibrillation, it's just so many things that the cardiologist has to do. But uh, today you're gonna meet a friend who has fixed it all. Okay, (laughs) introduce it. (laughs) Yes, Carla McNew. (laughs) Okay. has worked as an RN here for 40 years. And she's the head of our Women and Children's Nursing Division. Yeah. And when I met her last year, she had heart failure, leg edema, pulmonary hypertension. And walking three to four minutes, she would get out of breath. She couldn't do things that she needed to do as a nurse at the age of 64. And she's here to tell us her actual story. So what happened, Carla? We, we, first of all, when you were diagnosed and you, you had the symptoms and you're a nurse, so you pretty much had an idea of what was going on, were you concerned? I, I didn't want to believe what was going on, but when I went to my primary doctor and she ordered the testing and that diagnosis came back, it was pretty devastating. Um, I was full of fear. I could see the things that I still wanted to do in my life kind of slipping away. So you were and, afraid you could die. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was <clears throat> met with Dr. Chuckalingham, a cardiologist, because my primary care was just a family practice doctor. And um, I was, when I left that meeting with him, he recommended <clears throat> intermittent fasting and healthful living. Um, I was, went from a state of devastation to a state of hopefulness. So and in that first visit, you went from being totally devastated to saying, maybe there's some hope here? Yes. And I left there with the power that I could change the outcome 
based on what he told me and what he instructed me to do. How did you change the outcome of what could have been a death sentence? Well, I read his book, and I listened to what he said. And in the first two or three weeks, I had, it took me a little bit to wrap my head around it all and to think, how am I going to manage this? And I figured out a plan so that I could start with intermittent fasting. I started watching portion sizes, started eating more anti-inflammatory types of foods instead of what I was used to eating, which is all inflammatory foods, um, and started exercising slowly. Um, and so now I exercise six to seven times a week, and I'm still doing the intermittent fasting. I f fast for 16 hours a day and eat during an eight-hour period. Twice a month I do a 24-hour fast, and it worked great for me, and I feel wonderful. Now, we have a before picture. If you're listening on the radio, obviously we'll paint a picture. But you, we have a before picture of you and then what you are now. You've lost... How, how much weight? I lost 70 pounds over you, about nine months. Now, that's a, and there's, that, there's that picture of you. Uh, how long ago was that picture taken? That was in 2019. Okay. But you've lost 70 pounds mm -hmm. in how many? Over a nine-month period. And now, so what is your diagnosis of heart failure? Is everything back to normal? He, he tells me I'm cured. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> Within nine months of being first diagnosed at the end of 2021. So by 2022 mid, she had stopped all her medicines for heart failure. The diuretics that are needed to keep the fluid under control. The pressure in the lungs started getting better. Her exercise time doubled. And now it is in the normal range. And I waited for six months, eight months. She's only getting younger every time I see her. I thought it's time I bring her and share her <laughs> story with you now. So what you're saying then is she is cured yes. of the heart yes. failure. So the mortality risk of 75% within three to five years is now down to zero from heart failure. Was this done without medication? She, takes, she took heart failure medicines when she needed it. Now she's not needing the heart failure medicines. And even the blood pressure medicines that she was on for 20 years, her blood pressures are so low now that she's not needing them. And when you have a stiff heart, there are really no pills that make you live longer. So that if the heart was weak, like some other heart failure patients from heart attack or alcoholic cardiomyopathy, there are some medicines that lengthen life. For her, she doesn't need anything if her blood pressure is low and she's feeling great. And you can ask her how young she feels now. How long do you feel? <laughs> I feel great. I've I, f I feel like I have the mindset of like in my 20s. <laughs> good for you. you. Know? Well, good. Congratulations. Thank you. And the fact that now he says you're cured. Yes. And you're she cured has lost 45% of her weight. Of okay. her entire weight, she's lost 45 But more than that, it's that mindset, the happiness, yeah. the optimism, that okay. positive psychology. We try to encourage people, but Carla just ran with it. Right. <laughs> Anand, we're out of time. Carla, thank you so much. But if people want more information, you have We it. do this at the VA nationwide. We are teaching this. Okay, how do they get in touch? At the VA hospital and at the university. We do these cardiometabolic reversal programs okay. every day. Check it out online, okay? Thank you so much for coming by. It's our pleasure. Thank you. And continued success.